Charles, do you have three cases um, that are separate, but they involve basically the same development project? It is a rezoning of the main piece of property, which is already in city limits, and then the annexation and rezoning of another parcel of about two thirds of an acre that's adjacent to this that they're wanting to develop. Um, best thing to start geographically is to understand what's going on. Go to the very back page of the packet. That's the 11 by 17 layout plan. Is, that, is, this, a, is this a Stoker problem? It is. This is at the northeast corner of Venus and Guest Road. It's been vacant for many years. Some of you may have noticed the large concrete ditch that runs through part of the property. Um, this property has a long history. Back in the mid-90s, it was resumed to plan development while it was in the county, um, sort of related to the Hamilton Point subdivision to the east. This was sort of a mixed office and commercial complex that was contemplated at that time. And then in 2004, um, after Hamilton Point was built, of course, they had a revision to the master plan, give it a little bit more of a commercial flair, um, and that's in your packet. Um, and that was for the main piece of the property. And then in 2007, there was yet another change to the master plan, and they wanted water and sewer from the city of Valdosta, so it was annexed into the city in 2007. And when it was annexed, it was given PCD zoning, that's planned commercial development. Now, up until now, we're talking about that northeast corner, with the exception of the very corner itself, sort of a rhombus-shaped property that used to have a brick house on it. I remember that from back in the 90s. And that was not part of the Stoker property. And so the plan development sort of planned around that corner. And it was always thought at that time that, that would be something or would function like an out parcel with a gas station or a restaurant or, or something like that. Um, in 2007, that was before the city's LDR, uh, we had planned development zoning districts. ECD was planned commercial development. We had EPD, which was planned professional development. And we had PMD, which was planned mixed development. And some of you may remember a few years ago, uh, we did some amendments to the LDR. <coughs> the LDR ignored all of that and created its own funny little zoning districts. And we simplified it got rid of all of them and simply made plan development an overlay for them. So right now, this property, along with some others around town, have a planned something <coughs> zoning. And that is what I refer to as a defunct zoning district. It is not in the current regs, sort of a grandfather in. We have to refer back to the old zoning ordinance as applicable for those projects. With the plan developments, however, since each rezoning that gave it its plan development zone, um, carried with it a master plan, and that master plan was made part of the zoning of the property. It simply means that if you build according to that master plan, all the grandfathered in, you're fine, but you're subject to those terms and conditions and so forth. If you deviate from that master plan and want to do something different, such as this case, <coughs> then you have to rezone the property to something else, and that's what they're doing. In this case, it's the applicant who's got the property under contract for a full-service grocery store with a drive through pharmacy and also a freestanding gas station. You see that laid out here on this master plan. The grocery store is over 40,000 square feet, about just under 42,000. Um, the best comparison I know to give you is about the size of Publix. So it's a full grocery store, a little bit of it. Um, but it's not really super big box retailers either. It's a, just a big grocery store with pharmacy. Um, that requires a rezoning. If you flip back a couple pages, you see the zoning map. And so let me, before you do that, before we leave the master plan, just so you can see the geography of it, the dashed line that sort of goes around the bulk of the property, that is the city limit line. That is the 9 point something, actually 9.18 acres. It is already in the city and is simply being rezoned from PCD and CH, remember that very corner is still highway commercial. And all those are being rezoned to CC. And then if you look to the lower right along Guest Road, you see an L-shaped piece of property that's sort of encompassed by a different dash line. That's the, the two-third acres rent, uh, which the applicant is being compelled to purchase also, sort of a package deal. And so they're going to use this, as you can see, not really for the development, it's really just to sort of round off the edges, get all that range just on their property, um, and use it as open space, although they've got plenty. 
but that is currently in Lowndes County. It was not annexed in 2007 because it was not part of that new master plan. It was part of the old master plan. So that is being brought in as an annexation. That's one of your other cases. That's actually the third item. And then the second item is the rezoning of that property from county PD to city CC. So in the end, all of this development property would be CC zoning in the city limits. And those are the three classes that were before. Um, looking at the details of this, you see the drainage ditch. Um, there's an underground pipe, actually a culvert, that sort of crosses the property. You see that label? That is a DOT drainage way to simply handle drainage from Bemis Road. There's an exclusive easement through there for that purpose. Um, many years ago, before this property was cleared, it was sort of a natural drainage way that went north to south through the middle of this. And back when they were preparing for one of those planned developments, the work with DOT, the drainage from Bemis Road had to go somewhere. So they routed it through the culverts and down the east side of the property. Um, it's new development. It's next to a residential subdivision. They're going to have to put in a buffer yard along their eastern boundary. Um, there's already a fence there, and so their minimum requirement is only a 10-foot buffer, but it will be a lot more than that. Um, if I remember the numbers correctly, I think at its closest point, this building is about 70 feet from the subdivision, and most of it is over 100 feet from the subdivision. So there's already a pretty good distance back there. But between the ditch and the houses will be the buffer yard. They'll put in. Can I kind of interrupt you? Yes. On, on this particular drawing here, you just showed half of the city, half of the county. Is that what, or is, or, or is it all, all of the city right now? Am I reading this wrong? Okay, on that drawing, get to it. You're showing a line down the middle of it, so that's, already, that's null and void, because it's already in the city now, except that one little box. Is that correct? Correct. In fact, that's what that label is, is not very good. Which, which one here? This one here. Yeah, that. What you're seeing is not an actual line where it says Lowndes County and then City of Valdosta right under it. Yes, sir. That line is actually an arrow. It is pointing to the intersection of those lines on the north side of Guest uh, Road, okay. which is the city limit line. Like if you follow that on around the corner to the east, you see Lowndes County, City of Valdosta along the property line. Yeah. The, the, that the, dash line through the middle is simply a property line. That's the city. The there. nine acres that is already in the city and simply being rezoned is three parcels. And on that survey, that's one, two, and three okay. listed there for it's it. Just, it the yeah, I just, by coincidence, it lines up. But it makes it look like the city limit line there. And it, hmm. it really is. No, no. Didn't see the arrow. The best one to go by is really this 11 by 17 drawing one because it's larger. And right. Two, it shows all of that on there um, in relation to the proposed development plan. So the only parcel they are annexing is 3A. 3A, yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. that little, that the little L sheet remnant yes. from the old Stoker development mm -hmm. problem. And we went through a history where there was foreclosure and it was bought, and so we were buying it as a package deal. Um, and as you can see in the aerial, some things they're doing, um, they're essentially keeping the entrance off of Guest Road that's already sort of installed. One thing that's in the hidden details here, I wanted to point out, as part of that, they're going to have to install a turn lane onto Guest Road, which is going to trigger a slight widening of the right of way. So with their development plans, they're showing a right-of-way dedication along the north side of Guest Road. So just a turn lane is not sufficient? Well, they've got, right now, Guest Road's a two-lane road. They need to add a center turn lane so people coming from Bemis, <coughs> Guest Road, they can let turn into this development. So you're talking about if on Bemis comes going south? On Guest Road going east. Guest Road? Right. Guest Road going east. Okay. There's lots of little white labels and arrows in there. Okay. One says proposed right of way, one will say existing right of way. Yes, sir. About 10 feet apart. Yes, sir. So they're going to wide the right of way. They've got plenty of room to do it. They need to turn lanes, so they're giving up some land to do this. Is the this development plans for all of this have already been turned into the city and being reviewed by the various departments. <coughs> uh, just to sort of let that run simultaneous with the zoning change. Is, it, is this the speculative nature, or do you know what the grocery store chain is? Um, the applicant has not publicly announced what the chain is. 
but it is a chain grocery store, you like you see it here. Any timeline on it? Um, they are planning to start construction in April and be finished by November and build all of this at once, which means the store and the gas station, all one development, all owned, operated, managed by one entity. And actually, you know, for full-service grocery store, this is a pretty good location. Yeah. Oh, I guarantee you. All right, so what I've given you is the car copy packet for item number four, which is the rezoning of the city parcel, which is the bulk of the project. Yes, sir. Um, items five and six, I don't have the car copies for you, but we've already gone through that information. It's pretty much contained on these maps and drawings. And it's going to be a much simpler packet when it gets emailed to you. This is the key. It's five or six, or do you recommend an approval on those? We're we're right through the back. Recommending approval of all of them, no conditions, just straightforward, two rezonings and an annexation. Basically, one project with three motions. Correct. One project, three files, three sets of filing fees. It was a complicated thing for our bookkeepers. <laughs> all right. all this and the notification to Laos County, of course, has already been sent. I think that's scheduled for the county commission meeting coming I, up. I don't anticipate any concerns on that small piece. That's that's what I've been carried forward, and so I don't anticipate that. It's up to the commission, but I don't anticipate any concerns. Matt, do we have to have three public hearings? Three items, three, three so votes. Separate, okay. separate items. Four, five, and six, just like Carmel has enlisted. Okay. So when we bring this up, we're going to have to do three different votes? Three different votes, three different hearings. Okay. All right. And this is a highly filed piece of property in the board hall. Correct. Mm -hmm. They'll submit a subdivision plan that shows all four parcels mushed back together. All right. After it's all done. Thank you, sir. Any other questions for staff pertaining to these two cases for this month? I've done an excellent job, guys, job. We've got job, guys. I'm going to tell you straight in a minute. <laughs>